welcome to this lecture today we are going to see how to draw shear force and bending moment diagram for a cantilever beam let me read the problem a cantilever of length 5 meter is loaded as shown in figure draw the shear force and bending moment diagram for the beam and this is the cantilever beam here it is subjected to different loads so that means here a point load is there and at this portion we have an uniformly distributed load and at this point we have an another point load first let us name the points where we are going to calculate the shear forces and the bending moments the first point is a and the second one is point b where the point load is acting and the third point is c the place where the udl is started to act in the cantilever beam and point d at this position the uniformly distributed load comes to an end and at point e which is located at the end of the cantilever beam where the point load is acting so in these points we are going to calculate the shear forces and bending moment before calculating the shear force let us think of the sign convention that what we are going to consider here the downward force is considered as positive so as far as finding shear force value at this a b c d e point is concerned we are going to consider the downward force as positive and the upward force as negative and as far as bending moment is concerned the clockwise bending moment is negative and the counter clockwise bending moment as positive while calculating the shear forces about these points we need to consider the shear loads or the shear forces which are located on these points and the shear forces which are located on the right side of the particular point at which we are calculating the shear force say for example if i want to calculate the shear force at c i have to consider the shear load at c and the other shear loads which are located on the right side of the point c i should not consider the shear load on the left side of the point c let us calculate the shear forces at point e we have a point load which is 2.5 kilo newton and at point d also we have the same load that means the shear force between d and e remain constant okay because there is no other load which is acting at d so the load which is acting e is also acting at point d now we have an uniformly distributed load which is acting at the section c d so first let us convert this udl into a point load so for that what we need to do is the intensity of this udl that is 1 kN per meter which has to be multiplied with the length of the section on which the udl is acting so the point load which is corresponding to this udl is 1 that is the intensity of that udl multiplied by the length of the section that is 2 meter so the point load which is acting at this point because of this uniformly distributed load is 2 kN so now we have converted this udl into an equivalent point load and this point load is acting exactly at the mid position of this section that is here 2 meter so at 1 meter from c it is acting similarly the same distance from d that is 1 meter now let us calculate the shear force at c okay so here we have a point load and here we have a point load because of this uniformly distributed load so at point c we have the shear force value as 2.5 plus 2 it is because of the uniformly distributed load so that is 4.5 kN so at point c we have 4.5 kN shear force value at point b we have a point load 3 kN which is acting downwards direction so at point b we have 
two different loads. Okay. So initially, uh, we have taken a point one that is 4.5 kilonewton because from B to C, the load remains constant because the same load which is acting at C is also going to be acting at point B. But suddenly at point B, the load gets increased because of this point load. So the second point is calculated by adding this 3 kilonewton with 4.5. So 7.5 kilonewton. So at point B, we have two different shear loads. One is 4.5 and another one is 7.5 kilonewton. And at point A, we have the same load what we have at point B. Okay, that is 7.5 kilonewton, which remains constant at the point A also. Now let us see how to draw the shear force diagram. First, let us draw the baseline so this is the baseline which represent the cantilever beam which is given so here we have point a b c d and e first let us locate this point 2.5 kilonewton on the shear force diagram so this 2.5 kilonewton is positive so here it is 2.5 kilonewton and since it is a point load it just started moving from E to this position that is like this we need to draw the straight line and at point D we have the same load because from D to E the shear force remain constant. So we are locating this point 2.5 kN corresponding to D okay so shear force at D is 2.5 kN and now these two line has to be connected by using a straight line. Then at point C, we have 4.5 kN shear force. So, let us locate this point that is 4.5 kN and connect these two points with a straight line. At point B, we have two different values corresponding to this point B. One is 4.5 Newton because this load remain same. So, we connected these points with a straight line and at point B, we have an point load 3 kN. So, suddenly at point B, the load gets increased. So, we have to add 3 kN with the existing one. So, it is going to be 7.5 kN. So, it has to be represented by a straight line like this. We need to be very careful about that point B because we have exactly a point load which is acting at this point and before that we have the other shear loads. So, we are initially considering the other loads by leaving this 3 kN and then we are adding this point load exactly which is acting at this point. So, we have two different points at the point B. So, now at point A we have 7.5 kN because from A to B the uh, shear force remain constant. Okay, so we have to represent this as a by a straight line. Okay, so this is the shear force diagram for the given cantilever B. Now let us see how to draw the bending moment diagram. For that, we need to find out the bending moment value at these five points that is A, B, C, D, and E. While calculating the bending moment about these points we need to consider only those bending moments created by the forces which are located on the right side of the point at which we are calculating the bending moment. Suppose if I calculate the bending moment at C, I need to consider only the moments which are created by the forces which are located on the right side of this point C. So first at point E, though there is a force 2.5 kN acting at this point, there is no perpendicular distance between this point of action of the force and the point at which we are going to calculate the bending moment. So, the moment at E is going to be 0, that means 2.5 multiplied by 0 distance, so it is going to be 0. At point D, we have a bending moment because of this uh, shear force, since it is acting in the downwards direction, it is going to create a clockwise moment about this point D. Since we take clockwise moment as negative, we put the negative sign here. 
So 2.5 multiplied by 0 0.5 and we are going to get this value as minus 1.25 kilonewton meter which is acting at point D. So the moment at D is minus 1.25 kilonewton meter. So now we are going to calculate the moment at C. Before that what we have to do is we need to convert this UDL into a equivalent point load as we did for the shear force and it is going to be acting exactly at the midsection of this section. So the moment at C is already we have a point load that is 2.5 kN multiplied by this distance that means 2.5. So minus 2.5 multiplied by this distance that is 2.5 meter and we have an another point load due to the uniformly distributed load that is 2 kN multiplied by 1 meter. So the moment created by this point load is magnitude of this point load multiplied by this perpendicular distance that is 1 meter. So it is also minus because it is acting in the counterclockwise direction. So the net value is minus 8.25 kN meter which is acting at point C. Now at point B we have the same two different loads but the distance gets changed because we are going to calculate the moment at B. So the first load is 2.5 kN multiplied by this distance that is B to E. So that value is 4 meter. So minus 2.5 multiplied by 4 meter and minus this point load because of UDL multiplied by this distance that is 1.5 plus 1 that is 2.5. So this value is minus 15 kN meter. Now we are going to calculate the moment at A. So we have three different point loads among one is due to the UDL. So let us see how to calculate this bending moment at A. The first one is corresponding to this point load that is 2.5 multiplied by this distance that is the entire beam length is 5 meter. So we put that here. So minus 2.5 multiplied by 5 meter the whole distance from A to E. It is also creating a clockwise moment so we put minus sign here and the point load due to UDL is acting here. So this load multiplied by this distance that is 3.5 meter from A to this load is 3.5 meter. So the moment is 2 kN multiplied by 3.5 meter minus this point load that is 3 kN multiplied by this distance from A to B that is 1 meter. So it is also in the clockwise direction so we put minus sign here. So the net moment which is acting at point A is minus 22.5 kilo Newton meter. Now let us see how to construct the bending moment diagram. First let us draw the baseline which represents the cantilever beam which is given here. So it is point A, point B, point C, point D and point E. At point E we have the bending moment value which is 0. So at this point the bending moment is 0. So we located the bending moment at this point E as 0. And at point D we have minus 1.25 kN meter. So since all the moments are negative in nature we have taken the values just right under the base line. Okay. At, at point D we have 1.25 kN meter and we have located it here and then we are connecting these two points with a straight line and at point C we have minus 8.25 kN meter at this region uniformly distributed load is acting so we need to connect these two points with the parabolic curve and at point B we have the bending moment value was minus 15 kN meter and we are going to connect these two points with a straight line and then at point A we have minus 22.5 kN meter and we connect these points with a straight line. So this entire region represents the bending moment diagram of the given cantilever beam. So thank you for watching.